organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Coming up on Daily Iowan TV, region appointments will tell you why some regions may not be confirmed by the Iowa Senate. And hospital sustainability, what the UIHC began on Thursday to help its budget and the environment. And in sports, an empire state of mind. The Hawks are off to the garden. That's all coming your way next. Daily Iowan TV starts right now. I'm Tom Brokaw. For more than 100 years now, the University of Iowa community has been waking up to the Daily Iowa. Today, it's the largest newsroom in eastern Iowa. And now you can see the news every night on Daily Iowa TV and get it anytime worldwide at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for tuning in to Thursday's edition of Daily Iowan TV. I'm Ian Martin. And I'm Kelsey Clemmy. New developments today in the controversy blocking Governor Terry Branstad's appointments to the board that oversees the state universities. Branstad named three men to the open Board of Regents slots on March 1st, and they're awaiting their confirmation from the Senate. But two nominees may not be happy with the Senate's answer. Daily Iowan TV's Sam Lane was at the state capitol on Thursday and has the story. It's been a rocky road for State Board of Regents President Craig Lang. He's worked through an economic downturn, the retirement of two university presidents, and a handful of publicity faux pas. But his latest test is perhaps his stiffest, trying to keep his job. Lang, a Republican who has served as a regent since 2007, wrote a letter to Senators Tuesday urging them to confirm Governor Branstad's appointment of him to another term. But Democratic Senate leaders don't seem to be wavering from their thoughts on Lang and fellow Republican nominee Robert Kramer. These are Iowans who volunteer to, to participate in state government, and we're saying in a very public way, we don't think you're good enough. So it's very difficult, and it's not an easy thing to do, but I predict that in those two uh, positions, uh, they, they will not be confirmed. Hatch criticized Lane for a lack of communication and for, quote, micromanaging universities to the point of conflict. The Democrats held a caucus Thursday afternoon at which officials were set to take a poll on the issue, but Lang has not been officially ousted yet. Branstad's appointments require a two-thirds majority vote from the Democratic-controlled Senate before April 15th for confirmation. And with all Republicans likely to vote in favor of the appointees, they'll need some help from at least 10 Democratic senators. Democrats insist a potential blocking of Lang and Kramer isn't a partisan issue, but Republicans aren't so sure. Branstad sent a letter to the Senate last week making the case for his appointees. Well, we believe it would send the wrong message for the chair of the Board of Regents who administered a tuition freeze to then get voted off. That's unfortunate, and that's Washington, D.C. style politics. We haven't had that here before, and we shouldn't start now. Republican Senator David Johnson said he thinks either Kramer or Lang will be confirmed, but not both. There's too much politics in all this. I, I try to concentrate on, on you know, what the leadership is. Both parties agree Branstad's third nominee, Dr. Subhash Sahi, should be confirmed without issue. One thing to keep in mind, the Senate has only blocked a region appointment once in history. Sam Lane, Daily Iowan TV. Thanks for that report, Sam. Turning to local government news, the Johnson County Board of Supervisors say they unanimously have support for same-sex marriage. The board began its meeting Thursday with an official proclamation urging the United States Supreme Court to strike down the Defense of Marriage Act. The board said, quote, we, the Johnson County Board of Supervisors, proclaim support for marriage equality for same-sex couples and urge the Supreme Court of the United States to once again rule in favor of marriage as a basic civil right, end quote. The Supreme Court isn't expected to rule in any same-sex marriage-related case until June at the earliest. And in state news, more than a dozen new bills became state law on Thursday. Some of these laws attempt to streamline government spending, and one law for small businesses eliminates the state's small business financial assistance program and allows the businesses to apply directly for the program's funds to be spent on them. Other new laws range from changing mental health facility funding to affecting the methods in which a no-contact order is served. And in Iowa House of Representatives, member Bruce Braley received two more endorsements for his 2014 Senate run. In an unsurprising announcement, both Iowa Attorney General Tom Miller and Iowa Treasurer Michael Fitzgerald, fellow Democrats of Braley's, voiced approval for the Waterloo native in a press release. Thursday, Braley, uh, Braley is soon to be seeking the vacated seat of Senator Tom Harkin. 
And stick around after our weather update for these stories coming up. We'll tell you what the university plans to do with the food you leave on your tray. And the DITV Sports Studio takes a look ahead to this weekend in Hawkeye Athletics. But first, it's time for our Nick Safransky to take a look at the local weather. And Nick, we finally had some nice weather Thursday. We'll be sticking around. Yeah, Kelsey, Iowa City has said that even though the calendar is officially spring, athletic fields in the county will be closed at least until April 7th. Based on the week's previous conditions and some current projections we're about to show you, it might make sense. Starting the weekend off, Friday morning will bring a high of 45 degrees and partial clouds. In the afternoon, the temperature should climb up to 54 degrees with those clouds still hanging around a little bit. Moving into Friday evening, the temperature should drop back down to about 45 degrees. Now looking ahead to the six-day forecast, Saturday we'll see another high of 57 degrees. However, there could be thunderstorms looming. Easter Sunday looks like it could be quite nice though with a high of 50. And into the beginning of the week, we'll see mostly partly cloudy skies and temperatures in the 40s. That's all I've got. Back to you guys. One Iowa City collective recently set a charitable example by giving more than $1,000 worth of food to the Crisis Center of Johnson County's Food Bank Program. The local American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees chapter gave $1,325 to be exact to the food bank. Much of the food donated was canned, which the food bank said tends to be popular with their clients because it keeps easily. The center has seen an increase in those needing assistance over the past two years, in large part due to inflation, drought, and an increase in food prices. And while the local union is donating money for more food, the University of Iowa is working to keep the environment with the scraps off of your plate. Starting Thursday, the UI Hospital and Clinic's dining facilities will offer a food compost composting plan to all visitors. Since it was estimated that the UIHC wasted $181,000 $181, on food in 2012, the hospital created composting bins that visitors and employees are encouraged to use. The bins will be used in each facility to sort over leftover food, paper sacks, straws, silverware, and more items. The compost will then be taken to the Iowa City landfill, which has seen a recent decline in compostable materials. And in world news, former South African President Nelson Mandela has been undergoing treatments for nearly four months for a chronic lung infection. Mandela, who is 94, has in fact had this infection before. A presidential spokesman said Mandela's doctors are treating him with extreme caution and making sure to take into account his age. Spokesman also said Mandela will be continuing his treatments and wished him a speedy recovery. Conflict between neighboring countries continues in Africa. Government officials reported Thursday that another battle took place in South Sudan, killing 163 people. In 2011, South Sudan broke away from its former country, Sudan. The two governments have only recently reached an agreement, but have yet to fulfill it. Reports show military conflict has been a frequent occurrence between the two countries with, ca with many casualties. Oscar Pistorius, the former Olympian who allegedly shot and killed his girlfriend on Valentine's Day, may still compete in this year's World Championships. On Thursday, a South African judge ruled the athlete may travel overseas to run, but only on certain conditions. Pistorius must provide a schedule of his plans and turn in documents to the court within 24 hours of returning home. The 26-year-old could face life in prison if he's found guilty for the crime. As we turn to sports, Ian, it's New York, New York for the Iowa basketball team. I actually hear you're going to be in the Big Apple for it. Yeah, Tuesday through Thursday, myself and a few other daily Iowan staff members will be giving you guys coverage of all the NIT happenings from Madison Square Garden. And with that, let's go to Lauren Moss, Daily Iowa TV Sports, for details of how the Hawkeyes got to New York City. Hi guys, and welcome back to the DITV Sports Studio. Who needs the NCAA tournament anyway? After being snubbed on Selection Sunday and two convincing wins against lesser schools at home in the opening rounds of the National Invitation, Invitational Tournament, Fran McCaffrey and his boys took the show on the road Wednesday night, knocking off the Virginia Cavaliers 75-64 to in the heart of the ACC country, ending the Wahoos' 19-game home winning streak while locking up a spot in the NIT Final Four in New York City. The Hawks got 24 points from junior Devin Marble, who has been lights out in postseason action so far, flourishing in his new facilitator role with freshman guard Mike Gazelle still recovering from a foot injury. 
Zach McCabe, and Adam Woodbury also came up big for the black and gold in Charlottesville, both scoring in double figures. By doing so, they helped the Hawks pick up their only third win, road win of the year so far en route to securing the school's first ever trip to Madison Square Garden in postseason play. Daily Iron TV Sports' Josh Bolander has more. I mean, you're going to look back on every game you possibly lost that didn't go your way. Sums up our season. You know, uh, we're right there every time. It didn't go our way, but it hurts. The outcome is the outcome. And, you know, once your destiny, once, you, once it's written, you can't go back and change it. Just a few short weeks ago, the University of Iowa men's basketball team came to the realization that the slipper wasn't going to fit. Even with a returning fan base hoping and revered coaches around the country lobbying. Uh, if, if we're so good and we're a top 10 team, Iowa deserves to be in the tournament. It became clear that their chance to dance, much like their double digit lead against the Spartans in the second round of the Big Ten tournament, had come and gone. Tears, disappointment, and a second straight trip to the NIT would instead be the Hawks' fate. And while postseason play was certainly expected, for one of the most exciting Hawks teams in recent memory, the truth is, this year's squad has been infected with the disease of Moore. One more game for senior Eric May. This is his last go around. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a special. We want to make a special. Game. One more chance to put on a show for the Carver faithful. One last chance to be a team. And so the Hawks took flight. You know the rest. First, an opening round win over Indiana State, a final home victory for the aforementioned May, and well, a whole lot of Devin Marble has put the Hawks in Madison Square Garden for the first ever time in NIT postseason play. It may not be where they expected to be, but there's no denying they're having fun doing it. Josh Bolander, Daily Iowan TV Sports. And Hawks are not the only team snapping streaks. Around the same time the Hawks were taking down one of the nation's longest collegiate win streaks, my hometown boys, the Chicago Bulls, were busy ending the second longest professional basketball streak in NBA history. A playoff atmosphere combined with some of the most physical play that the league has seen this year ended the Miami's Heat winning streak at 27 in the Windy City with a final score of 101 to 97. The Lakers of the early 70s still hold the league's longest win streak at 33 games. And finally, a few quick notes to get you caught up on before we let you go. The softball, baseball, tennis, and gymnastics teams are all in action in Iowa City over the weekend. The track and field, golf, rowing, and swimming and diving teams are all in action all over the country as well, competing in some NCAA championships. And while that's all I have for you for tonight's show, a whole lot of Hawkeye Hoops coverage coming for you this Sunday on our last courtside show of the year. Guys, back to you at the desk. Thanks, Lauren. Well, if you're looking for something to do this weekend, seeing a documentary might be a good option. A University of Iowa alumna demonstrates that the plight of those in need isn't limited to Iowa City. In her film, Devin Terrell recently co-produced American Winter, which debuted on March 18th on HBO. The documentary follows families from Portland, Oregon, who went through the struggles during the economic recession a few years ago. Terrell told The Daily Iowan her film is still relevant even though the recession is over because sequestration is cutting safety net programs for families. This Saturday, American Winter will be screened for free at the Englert Theater in downtown Iowa City. Lights go down at 2 o'clock Saturday. Yeah, Kelsey, that sounds really interesting. I might need to check that out myself. Finally, with Daily Iowan TV, you get an exclusive look into Friday's pages of the Daily Iowan. Read about why a local group is opposed to traffic surveillance. And find out how a new grant can keep more nursing students in Iowa. That's your latest edition of Daily Iowan TV. Check us out online anytime at dailyiowan.com. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.